Hello and welcome to my channel. As you can see, I am still cosplaying as a cozy girl. <laughs> because fall is, well, it's coming. It's not here. It'll be here in seven days, but I'm very excited. I, I'll be honest with you, I did not have the hot girl summer I was intending upon having. Um, and that's just because I got very, very involved. I still have my little, my little summer nails, which is, this is a better hand, but my nails grow really, really, Excuse the point. I did not have the hot girl summer I was intended on having. I got very focused on um, making content and growing my channel. And then, you know, I'm in Texas and we had weird re weather situations where like one week it would be storming and wind blowing everywhere out of control. And then the next week uh, it would be fine for a couple days and then we'd get warning of something else coming through. So that was kind of hard to to manage. And then uh, this Delta variant situation, I couldn't figure out like, what are we going to do? Are, you know, on one hand, we're being told the hospitals are filling up, which is true. Um, and that, you know, cases were resurging. And on the other hand, you know, I have to watch Kravis cavort around in Italy. And so I think I was just confused. Like, are, are we... Oh, 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 what's going on? And I think it was just that this summer was kind of people saying, you know, I'm going to try and uh, have as much fun as I can. Um, hopefully they made the right decisions regarding their health, you know, getting vaccinated, wearing masks. Um, but I think for me personally, I was just, I was hyper aware that um, things could happen, things could still happen. And so I wasn't as free as maybe I thought I was going to be able to be this summer, which I think was a lot of people's thing. You know, we thought we were heading into a hot back summer and um, it, and then, and then it was kind of it, 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 that sort of didn't happen. Now, I, I, like I said, I'm on social media, so I see people doing things, posting things, taking trips. I think that that's awesome. But I also think that you kind of had to have those things set up before you got into the summer to really have you know, that experience. Uh, for somebody like me that was waiting to get to the summer to make decisions, it was just a really weird, rocky time to try and um, do anything too ambitious with my, with my summer. Cause I just didn't know, you know, what was going to go on, what the environment was going to be like. Um, and so I ended up doing a lot of nothing. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I didn't have the hot girl summer I wanted to have, but I definitely plan on having a basic girl autumn. I'm all about the pumpkin spices in my coffee, the seasonal candles, uh, the movies, the coziness, the fall festivals. I love a fall festival. I'm about it all. I love it all. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, to that. But if you saw the title of this video, uh, I'm going to be talking about something that has been discussed a lot on the internet here as of late. Uh, and it's for a specific reason. And I'll be bringing that up. Parasocial relationships. Now, the concept is not new. People have actually been talking about it very very fervently in a lot of different pockets of the internet here on YouTube, especially um, there's videos that people have put out talking about it. So more than likely, um, if you clicked on this video, you either are already subscribed and you were like, oh, I wonder what she's babbling about today. Or you have seen other videos like this. And so the algorithm was like, aha, what, what will they think of this one? Regardless, the concept of parasocial relationships is not new and people talking about them is not new. Something happened within the last week, two weeks or so, and it got me to thinking about the parasocial relationships that I have with my favorite influencers and celebrities, how they've affected my life, my decision, my attitude um, regarding things that happen in pop culture. And so I wanted to just sit down for a second and talk about those realizations with you. So what happened? Last week, I posted a video talking about my reaction to um, the Hollywood baby boom and all the different babies and things that were being announced and the births and the plans to give birth and so on and so forth that were happening in Hollywood. And because I am, you know, in that mode of my life right now where that sort of news really matters to me, I felt really just overstimulated by all of the announcements and I wanted to come and talk about it. I almost didn't upload that video though. Like I, I had it, it was in my drafts and I was like, nah. And then I said, I'm gonna do it. And then I was like, nah. And finally, I said, you know what? Um, you're really just giving like a rundown of what happened in the week. You're giving some opinions. You know, they're your opinions. And uh, you go ahead and post it. The reason why I didn't want to post it is because I talked about John Mulaney and Olivia Munn. And after I recorded the video, I went and I saw what people were talking about on social media because I recorded it just kind of when the news first came out. I was like, oh, okay, I want to talk about this. Then I looked at social media and I was like, ooh, my opinion is not the predominant opinion. The first thing I noticed was that 
I really saw the whole situation more from Olivia's side. That's who I was looking at because that's who I have the parasocial relationship with. I don't care in any way about John Mulaney and I'll talk about why that is. The second thing I realized was there were people on the internet who were deeply, deeply, deeply hurt by this announcement, deeply hurt. There were a lot of articles written about it. There were people talking about it on TikTok. There were people talking about it on Instagram. And I had to sit back and be like, man, our parasocial relationships, the relationships that we have with celebrities and with influencers who don't know anything about us, they don't know we're alive, the attention and the love and the focus is not reciprocated, they really, really affect us um, in great in great ways. So I want to revisit what I said about the relationship. Um, and also, surprisingly, no one uh, in my that watched it really focused on that opinion. Well, at least at the last time I checked comments, which was like two days ago. So I checked comments since then, and someone actually did um, post a comment about what I said about the the two people and their relationship. And they were just expressing some displeasure and disbelief at the fact that I sort of viewed it all as like personal growth for him and a pl very plausible next step. And I didn't see anything wrong with him leaving a relationship, um, you know, that apparently, according to sources, there have been all kinds of accusations um, about what was really going on behind closed doors between John and his wife. But um, knowing that, I didn't see anything wrong with him leaving that situation and going into something that could possibly be healthier, especially if he was going to be now stepping into the role of father. Um, I, I didn't see it as a negative thing at all. And the person who commented said, if this was a woman, society would have been so hard on her, which I think they were very hard on John. But, you know, we would never allow a woman to get away with going to rehab and leaving a relationship and... And, you know, I don't know. It depends on the parasocial relationship that the audience has with her. I mean, look at Britney Spears. I mean, yes, you know, people want her freedom and they want free Britney and it looks like it's about to happen. But we also, as a society, um, forgive her for a lot of things. Uh, we allow a lot of things and we say, oh, you know, well, she's it's for this reason and it's for that reason. So I think, um, you know, as far as her behavior is concerned. So I think it depends on the relationship society has with that individual that determines how we judge their actions. So anyway, back to back to the video. Nobody really focused on what I had to say about John Mulaney and Olivia. And I think that's because of my demographic and who watches my channel. What did I say about them? So I, like I said, I was focusing more on Olivia. I was like, you know, she's had an okay acting career. I forgot that she had also done this show called The Newsroom. And she had also been in um, some movies that I actually do like, like um, I think it's called uh, what's it called? It's Office Christmas Party or something like that. So yeah, she's been around. Um, I always thought she was a good actress and she was funny. And I mentioned the show Perfect Couples that she did that I really enjoyed. There's something happening right now on uh, in media where Gen Z is discovering the movies, jokes, books, um, roles that were played by millennial women, were written by millennial women, were written for audiences of millennials. Um, and they are really, really deconstructing those things and taking them apart and finding a lot of things to criticize. And it's fair. The criticism is fair. Uh, for example, Rebel Wilson, she is getting taken apart all over social media. The character Fat Amy that she played in Pitch Perfect People are people are not pleased, not pleased with that character. And when the movie came out, you know, it was 2012. So I was I was like still in my 20s and I was like, oh, this is a fun movie. And um, it actually inspired me. I didn't realize it at the time, but inspired me to then go and join an acapella group when I got to L.A. Um, when the movie came out, you know, millennial audiences were like, oh, OK, it's funny. Yeah. Uh, instead of having a fat male comedy character, you know, like we'd grown up seeing, you know, with Chris Farley, may he rest in peace. Um, we'd grown up seeing really body male comedians. Um, there was that group of men who kept putting out all those really disgusting male centered comedies like Knocked Up and um, Super Bad, you know, back in the 2000s and early 2010s. So instead of having this character being played by a man, we've got this this woman who's willing to do this slapstick and make her wait to joke and do this and that 
at the time, audiences felt like that was slightly empowering. And now, I'm uh, now obviously we look back and we're like, ooh, she should never have been made the joke for that. Ooh, that's ooh, ooh, ooh. And I think that's happening with a lot of the media that my generation enjoyed. We're looking back at it and we're like, oh no. But the generation after us, Gen Z, is like they they are taking that stuff apart. And one of the things that happened was they found Olivia's book that she wrote. Now, I was an Olivia Munn fan, and I did look into the book. And I felt like a lot of the things that she said back at that time, they were typical of girls trying to make jokes in order to validate themselves in front of mostly male audiences. I can joke around just like the men. I can say really, really sexist things about women, but you know what? I'm doing it just like the men do it. It's not an issue. At the time, I was like, oh, I recognize the type of comedy that she's trying to do. I'm not offended by it. Now I go back and look at it, courtesy of young media critics on TikTok, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, she mm -mm, she shouldn't have said none of that. But it's, it's very interesting now how the uh, media that I grew up with and came into my adulthood with is now being deconstructed in such um, aggressive ways, which I think is a positive thing, but at the same time, it's kind of, sometimes it's hard to, it's hard to hear, um, or it's hard to see these things in a new light. And there are shows now that I can't watch because I'm like, ooh, surprisingly 30 Rock. I realized the other day, I was like, oh no. At the time we were like, ha ha, this is great. And now I go back and look at it and maybe it's just a personal thing, but a lot of the jokes and things that they say, I'm just like, Are we sure this is the direction that we wanted to go in? But moving on. So Olivia Munn is not liked. She is not liked by a lot of people, especially the younger generation. She's not liked. They don't, they don't remember perfect couples and they don't care about it. They know this book and they know that someone that they do really, really like, John Mulaney, is involved with this woman and he shouldn't be in, in their minds. Let's talk about why he shouldn't be and why I don't agree because I don't have the same connection to John Mulaney. So John Mulaney is that type of comedian. He is geeky, dorky, white comedian. He has a relationship with his wife that while being a heteronormative relationship is not, you know, two kids, two car garage, white picket fence. You know what I'm saying? He's conventional, but his choice and his proclamations, I don't want to have kids. I don't need to do any of that. Those things are very unconventional. So they gave him kind of an edge. His only child was his dog, Petunia. That was the only thing that he was sort of worried about. People really, really, really loved and identified with John Mulaney. Here's why I and never did. John Mulaney reminds me of guys that I went to college with and then guys that I attempted to do comedy with when I graduated from college. Um, they describe themselves in their own eyes. They are dorky. They are unassuming. They're, you know, funny, but they're really shy. What I found them to be were elitist, um, sometimes bullies, sometimes a little racist, and most importantly, arrogant, extremely arrogant. And I always felt like the unassuming, I'm so awkward, whatever, whatever. I always felt like it was an act because at the end of the day, I knew that in society, this dude has way more power than I do. Why would I ever buy into this shtick? He doesn't need me to. I remember being back in college and like I said, I did some comedy stuff and these guys, they like ran our on-campus television station and they had this awards ceremony and I was nominated for an award for some of the silly stuff I was doing and they nominated each other and then they gave each other the awards. And I remember being kind of let down by it because I was like, oh, I work really hard. Hmm. And this guy came up to me and he said, well, you didn't expect to beat the guys, did you? This is around the time when it was really okay to say to someone, oh, well, women aren't actually funny. Well, well what, yeah, well, she's funny, but you know, women aren't really funny. To me, when I see John Mulaney, like I cannot help but see that guy. Also, let me go back to this whole geeky, awkward thing. So I really don't buy into that. Those types of men will always be like, oh gosh, I'm such a silly Billy. Oh, 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 oh. You know, we look at a certain type of man and media and we're like, oh, he's a playboy. He's a Lothario. Oh, he's a certified lover boy. In my experience, white male comedians that come off as, you know, intellectual and geeky, they, they, are, they, they are super popular with the ladies. And so when it came out that he actually had probably cheated on his wife and not met Olivia in May and not, I wasn't surprised at all. I was like, yeah, that's, that's what they did. Like they're, they're, they are magnets. And they get away with it because everybody's like, oh, well, he's the nice guy. He's this, I never bought into it. I never, and to be honest with you, 
I never felt that he was that funny. Um, I remember watching those stuff on sketches. And even though Bill Hader is that same type of, <laughs> I'm just a geeky white guy. You know, even though he's that same type of dude that puts himself out there like that, but you know, he pulls as the kids would say, um, I love Bill Hader because I, I do think Bill Hader is funny. So really all that other stuff I said is, um, is defunct. It comes down to this. I just, I was never tickled by John Mulaney and he would write those stuff on sketches on SNL. And I never, they never did anything for me. I never laughed once. Um, the hardest I ever laughed as an, on SNL in recent years was when Kristen Wiig did that girl Penelope and she would like pull at her hair and always have to one up people on the, when I say tears, and I don't know why, I've gone back and watched the sketches now, and I'm like, but I just, oh, and the, I would think this was funny, the Debbie Downer sketches. When they go to Disneyland, and it's the one with Lindsay Lohan, and they're trying to get through those, with those waffles, oh, and the one with Ben Affleck, the, I, I, that's so funny to me. But John Mulaney was never, I was never like, he's the best thing ever to happen to comedy. I was never super duper impressed with him. And uh, I, I never bought into the shtick because I know that guy. And so, and even though it's unfair, right, to to put everybody in this under the same umbrella of something, um, I just, I can't help it. Underneath all that, he's a man who knows his position in society. They know their power. They know what they wield. And they'll always be like, oh, I'm just, I'm just a dork, just a geeky dork, please. Police. So yeah, I didn't have the same relationship with John Mulaney as a lot of the people um, on the internet did. And as a result, when I uploaded my video and then I started watching some of the other things and looking and seeing what was happening on the internet, I was just, I was overwhelmed. I was like, what? I can't, I can't put this video out here. I'm like, yay, she's 41 and she gets to be a mom. And people are actively wanting, <laughs> people are actively like wanting to go on headhunting missions and find out, you know, the timeline and figure out how many months... I was like, whoa, but I really, really had to sit back and think about how our biases affect our parasocial relationships. They affect our perspective. I have an incredible bias against John Mulaney types, an incredible bias. That's that's based on history that I have with what I have stereotyped as that type of man, right? And there's people that don't have that bias and so they look at him differently. Another example um, that I wanna give is people's reaction to my summation of the Kylie Jenner situation. So without saying too much about that because it did involve people um, acknowledging that I'd forgotten to point out that when she began a relationship with Tyga, um, she was underage. And so, yes, that is that is something. I think because it was so long ago, I've forgotten that that was the reality of that situation. So I do apologize for skipping over that um, because that should, not be, that should not be ignored. But I do have to say that Kylie represents a lot of different things for me. And all of those things combined affect my bias, which affects my perspective, which affects my parasocial relationship that I have with Kylie. So I'm gonna look at anything she does in my own specific lens. And uh, it's not gonna always be the same lens as everyone else's. So I think just a takeaway from, from this situation is that parasocial relationships, while most of us can agree, are not real. When I even think about this issue, I'm like, oh, how ridiculous is it that people were so offended by that? They don't know that man. I, If you saw from the title, I realized like, whoa, I have a pretty serious parasocial relationship with Beyonce. Um, if you even try and say to me that you don't get it or that you're not that big of a fan, I have literally like offered to fist fight. You know, of course it's been after a couple drinks, but I've offered to fist fight in her honor. She does not know me, okay? When she lost the Grammy to Adele that year and Adele like broke off pieces of the Grammy to give to her, I was in tears. And then I wrote her a poem and I sent it to her in her DMs. Uh, she never, she she never wrote back, and I, she won't. I've I've unsent it at this point. But that's a lot, you know, and that's a that's a big parasocial connection to a person. Parasocial relationships can be great. They help us understand who we're becoming as people. They help us make informed choices about things. I mean, I just, I think about the YouTube makeup heyday between like 2015 and 2019. I wouldn't buy anything unless Jackie Ina said it was okay. I mean, I, I would not do it, right? Um, I also think about parasocial relationships that teach us, you know, we go to these people to learn how to do things. 
we go to them sometimes to feel normalized about situations. Like whenever I need to feel, you know, oh, dot, 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 I, I know what, I'll go look at so-and-so's post. In fact, I think that's one of the things that has happened with my channel is that people have said, oh, you know what, I watch her content and I it's, it's, it's normalizing certain events in my life, if that makes sense, because she's talking about them out loud. Um, so I think parasocial relationships can be positive. Now, obviously they can be negative too. Uh, what happened with John Mulaney and Olivia Munn you know, at the end of the day, we don't really know the timeline of their relationship. And, you know, you have people wishing a lot of really evil and negative things on this woman who is in the process of growing a new life. Um, I also think about what happened with Chris Evans and Jenny Slate. So they were dating a couple years ago and people found out they were dating and they gave her such a hard time because she's not apparently on his same level of attractiveness. I think about what happened with Olivia Wilde and Harry Styles how when they went public with their relationship, they got attacked. She she had to limit her comments on her Instagram. I mean, because people were really like, no, I was gonna date him. No, you weren't. I think about what happened when uh, Lori Harvey started dating Michael B. Jordan. Now, I think, I think that was a different situation because I think everyone was kind of like, oh, he, he with Lori Harvey? I lost. You know, we, we sort of just accepted it. Like we were like, okay, we, uh, we, we see, we understand. You know, and outside of coupledom and coupleships and what couples have done, I think of celebrities who have let us down, like Chrissy Teigen. I mean, you can look at my channel and see, I was like, leave her alone. And then I was like, I'm gonna leave her alone. You know, I, because she did not leave up to what I believed her real personality to be, even though I never knew Chrissy Teigen. You know, and just to throw it back to Beyonce, a couple weeks ago when she posed with Jay-Z in that ad wearing the diamond in front of the Basquiat painting. Um, ooh, there was some backlash because number one, I think uh, there was backlash for a lot of reasons, but I think people at least expected Beyonce to be a more informed promoter of things, right? And I think there was some disappointment. Again, we don't know her. And that's what a lot of, a lot of people were like, hey, we don't know her and she, you know, made her choices and look at some of the other choices that she's made. Can we be surprised? Um, and again, a lot of people's different perspectives on art and commercialism and consumerism, you know, kind of intersected to create their bias and how they were looking at the situation. But um, yeah, so that's an example of when, you know, those parasocial relationships can kind of come and bite you in the butt. And that when celebrities don't live up to our ideals for them, we we get very upset and we get very, very hurt. And then, you know, parasocial relationships can be a really negative thing. You know, I think about situations where people have died, people have been stalked, people have been attacked. Um, a couple weeks ago, I talked about the influencer Mercedes Moore. And uh, what ended up happening was the news released pictures of what happened in her home and the writings on the wall that her assailant had put on the wall. Um, things like, oh, I never should have loved her. I was taken advantage of. It's very clear this man had a parasocial relationship with this woman and was not able to draw the line in the sand, was not able to realize, like, I don't know her at the end of the day. She doesn't owe me anything. She is somebody who has curated a personality on a public platform, and I have chosen to interact with this. But that's the extent of the reality of the situation. And so I think when people can do that, right, when they can draw that boundary, I don't know this person, I am interacting with a curated form of them, but not with the real person. And as a result, I need to respond to those interactions accordingly. I think when people can do that and they can draw boundaries, I think parasocial relationships can be fine. But if we don't, then we end up like people were this past week when John Mulaney made that announcement and we end up hurt and we end up confused and angry. And some of us end up uploading and deleting a video about five times and then writing an extended apology in the comment section. Thanks for watching.